This is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a horror, mystery, thriller film called Orphan. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In the delivery room, Kate Coleman feels that something is wrong with her child. The nurse informs her that the baby is dead, but they must still deliver it. Stunned, Kate argues that the baby is still moving. The doctor grabs his knife and cuts her stomach, ignoring Kate's requests to be put to sleep. Her husband, John, rushes into the room with a video camera and assures her that she is doing great. The baby cries for a few seconds and the nurse brings the baby wrapped in a bloody blanket. Kate screams in agony, waking up from her nightmare. The following morning, Kate sees her therapist, Dr. Browning and speculates that the nightmares occur because she and John have decided to adopt a child, but Kate thinks she isn't ready yet. Kate also mentions how she avoided going to a liquor store on her way to the office, although she was tempted. Dr. Browning assures her that she can be an adoptive mother if she can finally resist that desire. Later that day, Kate picks up her deaf daughter, Max, from school. While driving home, Kate gets so distracted by a pregnant woman crossing the street that they're nearly hit by a massive truck. Back at home, Kate greets John with their son, Danny, who snatches a ball from Max and shoots a hoop. Kate happily watches her family play around with the basketball before rushing inside. That night, Max heads to bed, and Kate tells her a story about a girl named Max who was excited to have a baby sister, but baby Jessica died and went to heaven. Max was relieved that she was in heaven, but wished she could have met her. Kate then kisses Max goodnight. As Kate takes her antidepressants in the bathroom, John appears behind her and initiates some intimacy. However, Kate isn't in the mood, which John respects, so he climbs into bed instead. She lies next to him and expresses how excited and nervous she is about adopting a child. Kate hadn't felt that way since before they lost Jessica. John believes that they shouldn't adopt if she isn't ready, but Kate insists on sharing the love she had for Jessica to a child who needs it. The next morning, Kate and John leave for St. Mariana's Orphanage for Girls, where Sister Abigail welcomes them. While Kate proceeds to see the girls with Sister Abigail, John goes to the bathroom. As John searches for his way back, he hears a girl singing and painting alone in a room. John is about to walk away when the girl greets him and introduces herself as Esther. John looks through her paintings, finding them exceptional given Esther's age. He quickly finds a connection with Esther as they share the same interest in the arts. When Kate and sister Abigail enter, John introduces Kate to Esther. The couple quickly decides to adopt Esther. They discuss this with sister Abigail, who characterizes Esther as a mature, well-educated and lovely nine-year-old. Weeks later, Max welcomes them outside the house. Esther greets her using sign language and Max takes an instant bond to her new sister. Inside, Esther meets Danny, who isn't a fan of her. Esther is overjoyed to see their piano and Kate offers to teach her to play, which Esther readily accepts. When they show Esther her bedroom, she thinks it's lovely. A few days later, the family celebrates Esther's adoption, complete with gifts and cake. However, Danny is uninterested in joining the family celebration, preferring to play Guitar Hero with his friend. When Danny is on the verge of winning a game, he tries to get John's attention, but John is preoccupied with Esther unpacking her present. She hugs John and smiles over his shoulder while staring at Danny. Jealous, Danny leaves and invites his friends into his treehouse. The following day, the teacher introduces Esther to her classmates. Brenda, a mean little girl, teases Esther for dressing in an old-fashioned dress. Esther says nothing and walks calmly to her seat, staring coldly. Later that night, Kate prepares Esther for a bath. While fixing Esther's clothes, Kate discovers a book with a photo of a man in her drawer. Kate places the book back and continues with the chores. As she leaves, Esther opens the bathroom door and looks out as if she's aware of Kate's activities. At school, Danny purposefully knocks a book out of Esther's hands. Before she can pick it up, Brenda takes it and ridicules her when she realizes it is a Bible. Esther tries to take the Bible from Brenda, but it quickly falls to the floor, scattering the pages everywhere. Esther panics and hurries to pick them up as a crowd gathers and laughs at her. Brenda reaches for the ribbon around Esther's neck, but is taken aback as Esther yells until everyone falls silent. Danny is perplexed as Esther continues to scream as if she were possessed. That night, while everyone's upstairs, Kate and John make love in the kitchen. Unbeknownst to them, Esther is watching them from the stairs. When they notice her, Esther heads back to her room. The next day, Kate tries to explain to Esther what she saw. Esther appears uninterested in that and proceeds to paint. 
But when Kate insists on explaining, Esther claims that she knows what they're doing and even uses the slang word for it, which surprises Kate. The next day, John is at the park with Max and Esther. While John pushes Max on the swing, Esther notices Brenda. John goes to smoke a cigarette, letting Esther and Max explore the playground. Brenda feels frightened as she sees that Esther is out of her sight. When she approaches the slide, Esther suddenly appears behind her and pushes her off causing Brenda to fall. The fall breaks Brenda's ankle and Esther walks away. Max witnesses everything. During dinner, John and Kate question Esther about what happened, but she claims that she was playing with Max when Brenda fell, to which Max agrees. As they eat, Danny gives Esther an attitude, so John demands Danny apologize to his sister. Danny reaches a breaking point and exclaims that she isn't his sister before leaving the table. As punishment for his outburst, John locks Danny's treehouse and promises to unlock it after Danny apologizes to Esther. A few days later, Sister Abigail pays a visit after learning about Brenda's accident. Sister Abigail claims that she read Esther's record and reveals that Esther was always there whenever harmful incidents occurred in their orphanage. She also shares that Esther's previous house burned due to arson, not by accident. Meanwhile, Esther hears their conversation and asks Max for help, telling her that a mean lady came to take her away. They head to the bridge near the house, knowing Sister Abigail's automobile will pass by. Esther instructs Max to stand in front of Sister Abigail's car to stop her. As Sister Abigail's car approaches, Max refuses to move. Esther pushes Max into the road and Sister Abigail hits the brakes, causing her car to skid off the road. She gets out of the car and runs to a crying Max, but Esther smashes Sister Abigail's head with a hammer. Sister Abigail is bleeding and unconscious, but Esther is confident she will wake up soon, so she drags Max up and forces her to help. They pull her body down a hill, but Sister Abigail awakens and attempts to climb back up. Esther takes the hammer and hits Sister Abigail until she's bloodied and dead. The insane kid brings the traumatized Max up to the treehouse. She removes her bloody dress and gloves while Max continues to cry. Esther explains to Max that she did it because Sister Abigail informed John and Kate about Esther's wicked activity. She then asks Max if she's going to tell on her too, to which Max nods no, afraid that Esther will kill her. As they climb down from the treehouse, Danny observes them from a distance. That evening, while Danny is sleeping, Esther holds a box cutter to his throat and asks him what he saw. He claims that he only saw her and Max coming down from the treehouse, and Esther threatens to castrate him if he tells anyone. Terrified, Danny pees himself by accident. She lets Danny go and walks out of the room calmly. The next day, Kate and John bring Esther to Dr. Browning. Things take an unusual turn when Dr. Browning claims that Kate, not Esther, is to blame. Kate is irritated when John refuses to back her up and simply remains silent throughout the session. When they reach home, Kate receives a call from the orphanage asking for Sister Abigail's whereabouts. Worried, Kate calls the police to search the area, leading them to her corpse near the bridge. Worried, Kate spends the whole night researching what could be wrong with Esther. She's also eager to know Esther's history since the orphanage lacks enough information about her. Kate shares the information she learns with John, but he's unconvinced since Esther acts normal when he's with her. The following day, John intends to bring Esther to the dentist, but Esther refuses. Instead, they paint together in his office. Esther expresses her gratitude to John and her belief that Kate doesn't love her. John assures her that Kate loves her and convinces Esther to do something nice for her. At the same time, Kate drives Max and Danny away from the house and inquires whether Esther has done anything to cause them harm. Terrified, they both reply no. That night, Esther walks into the kitchen and gives Kate a bouquet of white roses as a surprise. Kate immediately recognizes the roses are from baby Jessica's dedication garden. Kate snaps and clutches Esther's arm, causing her to scream. When John hears the commotion, Esther goes away while John consoles Kate, openly crying as she crumples on the floor. Kate heads to the garden and sees Jessica's plant completely ruined. She mourns, feeling like she lost her baby all over again. Meanwhile, Esther sneaks into the tool shed and slips her arm into a clamp. Esther tightens it until her bone snaps. She then goes to bed and cries for help. John rushes Esther to the doctor, terrified by the marks on her arm. Confused, Kate considers drinking, but decides against it after seeing the pond that nearly killed Max before. She dumps the wine down the drain and goes to bed downstairs. The next day, while Kate drops off the children at their schools, Danny's book falls off his bag. As Kate assists Danny, Esther leaves the car and releases the brakes, causing the vehicle to roll down the slope while Max is inside. 
Kate pursues the vehicle and people attempt to stop it, but it is too fast. Finally, the automobile collides with a massive pile of snow. Kate rushes to the car and swiftly gets Max. That night, Kate defends herself to John and Dr. Browning. He reveals that Esther found the wine bottles. John can't help but wonder if Kate is drinking again and Dr. Browning thinks the same thing. John threatens if Kate does not enter rehab, he will divorce her and take the children with him. Unbeknownst to them, Max cries as she listens to them. Esther approaches her and whispers that if Max tells, she will kill Kate. While Esther showers, Danny sneaks into Max's room and asks whether she knows anything about Esther. Max confesses by showing Danny her drawings of Brenda's injury, Sister Abigail's death and the automobile accident. Danny assures Max that their parents will believe them once they get the evidence from the treehouse. Unfortunately, Esther overhears the entire conversation. The following day, Danny sneaks up to his treehouse and looks for the evidence but he can't find them. Suddenly, Esther pops out and dumps the hammer and clothes to the ground. She threatens that Max will be arrested for assisting her, but Danny defends that Max was forced. Esther pours fuel on the evidence and ignites both the evidence and the treehouse. She flees and locks Danny inside. She watches with a smile as Danny pleads for Kate. He crawls out a window and holds onto a branch as the treehouse collapses. However, he cannot hold on for so long, causing him to fall, but miraculously lives. As Esther prepares to finish him off with a rock, Max appears and pushes her. Kate arrives just in time. At the hospital, the doctor informs them that Danny is alive and in stable condition. Kate wonders if either Esther or Danny caused the fire, but John is unconvinced. Annoyed, Kate agrees to go to rehab if Esther leaves the house at the same time. Meanwhile, Esther sneaks into Danny's room, places his cardiac monitor on her finger, and suffocates him with a pillow. Suspecting that Esther is up to something, Max rushes to find Kate. A little while later, the physicians run to Danny's room as he has flatlined. Kate and John are terrified, but they breathe a sigh of relief when Danny is resuscitated. Enraged, Kate yells at Esther and smacks her hard, believing Esther has something to do with it. The nurses sedate Kate as she makes a scene, while John consoles Esther and helplessly watches his wife slip off to sleep. They put Kate in a hospital bed while John, Max, and Esther head home. While Max is sleeping, John drinks several glasses of wine, upset by what's happening. Esther appears wearing dark makeup and a strapless dress. John is so intoxicated that instead of being upset, he sobs and openly tells Esther that he's worried about Danny. When Esther touches him, John snaps back to reality and orders her to go to her room. Esther rushes to her room, sobbing uncontrollably as the makeup drips down her cheeks. Meanwhile, Kate is recovering in the hospital when her cell phone rings. It's Dr. Varava from the San Institute in Estonia who asks where Esther is. He instructs Kate to contact her husband and direct him to get their family out of the house and notify the police. The doctor informs Kate that Esther's real name is Lena Klammer, who was 33 years old. Esther has an uncommon condition called hypobituritism, which causes dwarfism. Dr. Varava reveals that she was one of their most violent patients and had to wear a straitjacket to prevent her from hurting their employees. Esther was constantly fighting her way out of the straitjacket that scarred her neck and wrists. Esther vanished from the institute a year ago. He warns Kate that Esther used to pretend to be a charming girl who seduces the fathers. When the father refuses, she kills them and the entire family before burning the house. Back at home, Esther removes her fake teeth and cosmetics, showing her true mature face. John searches Esther's room and accidentally discovers the story behind Esther's paintings, depicting violence and sensuality. Suddenly, the lights go off and when John checks the power panel, Esther stabs him repeatedly. She looks up and realizes that Max has witnessed the entire incident. As Max hides, Esther takes John's gun and searches for her. Fortunately, Kate arrives at the house where she discovers John on the floor. As she grieves, Kate remembers Max and immediately looks for her. However, Esther comes across Kate and shoots her in the shoulder. Kate continues her quest for Max despite the injury. On the other hand, Max is hiding behind the plants. She's relieved to see Kate on the greenhouse roof, but Kate urges her to remain quiet since Esther is there. As Esther is about to find Max, Kate screams to catch Esther's attention. Kate slams the roof, causing her to fall on Esther. As she wakes up, Kate carries Max and escapes into the woods just as police cars arrive. When the cops enter the residence, they check the entire household, but Esther is nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, Kate is still comforting Max outside, away from the house. 
Suddenly, Esther lunges at her with a knife. Max watches Kate and Esther wrestle each other down a slope into the icy pond. Max snatches the gun and tries her best to aim at Esther. However, the kid shoots the ice instead of Esther, causing them to fall into the frigid waters where they continue fighting. As Kate manages to overpower Esther, she climbs out of the water. Esther emerges and clasps her legs. She pretends to be sweet and acknowledges Kate as her mum while hiding a knife behind her. Enraged, Kate finally snaps and screams that she's not her mum before kicking Esther's face, breaking her neck. As Kate flees with Max, Esther sinks in the frigid water. Behind Esther's charming facade hides a violent and deluded psychopath who longs for men. While everyone seems blinded by Esther's manipulations, Kate sticks to her maternal instincts and doesn't give Esther the benefit of the doubt after the unfortunate events occur. In the end, Kate manages to protect her kids from the nightmare that she brought into their home. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.